So far we've learned about some descriptive statistics for spatial data, but we haven't really investigated the pros and cons of these statistics, mostly because in order to correct for some of the cons, we really have to introduce much more complicated techniques, and we're not ready to do that. But for now, it's important to understand that all of the descriptive statistics that we've covered have the potential to be extremely affected by spatial outliers, so points in a point distribution that are far away from the rest of the distribution, or weight outliers, points that have some extreme weight in comparison to the weights in the other points, or both. We also see that the mean center and standard distance don't necessarily differentiate between very different point patterns. Despite these two point patterns uh, in the examples below being extremely different, we see that the, they both have the same mean center and standard distance. But very clearly, the point pattern on the left can be described as very different to the point pattern on the right. So do you recall which kind of spatial statistic we could use? to differentiate between the dispersion patterns of these two statistics? If you said standard deviational ellipse, you're right. On the left-hand side, if we, cal if we were to calculate the standard deviational ellipse, we would end up with a uh, ellipse that very closely matches the shape of the standard distance circle, because the dispersion away from the mean here happens evenly in all directions. On the other hand, the dispersion away from the mean on the right hand side only really occurs in the left in the in the horizontal dimension there's almost no dispersion going north and south so in this case if we were to draw uh the standard deviational ellipse we'd probably end up with something like this and such an ellipse very clearly illustrates the difference between the the pattern on the left and the pattern on the right here's another example where we have the same amount of absolute dispersion, or the same amount of isotropic dispersion, using the standard distance statistic. But it's very clear here that the standard deviational ellipse would be able to pick up on the differences between these two point patterns. And finally, everything that we've covered so far can be considered first order spatial statistics. And remember, these first order spatial statistics have to do with the absolute locations of points uh, in the data set. They ignore other sources of meaningful information. For example, the distance of points to the underlying street network. So here, in this case, we might find, uh, or dis we might describe the point distribution having some sort of uh, dispersion away from the mean center in terms of a standard distance circle or a standard deviational ellipse, but really the appropriate distance uh, statistic to use here would be some kind of distance, a level of dispersion along the street network away from this source point.